This conference will now be recorded. Right, so in the last class, uh, we have seen how to validate the module pool transactions. As part of that, we have seen automatic field validations, flow logic validations, and module pool validations. Okay, and uh, we have seen the concept of chain in chain, and we have seen the concept of at exit command module. Now, let us see another type of control called as tab strip control. So in our screen painter, we have a control called as a tab strip control. Okay, so you can assume this tab strip control is similar to tabbed block in selection screen. In selection screen, we have discussed something called as tabbed block. So here also we have what tab strip control. So tab strip control is a collection of what tab buttons. Okay, means if you go to this SC11. Suppose so here, if I go to this SC11, okay, you open any table. Suppose if I open the K11 table, okay, you can see here we are getting the tabs here. So this is nothing but a tab strip control. Whenever I select any tab, we are getting a screen. This screen we call it as what sub screen, okay. So if you understand here, if I if I navigate to that screen, we are getting the tab. We are getting a screen containing tab strip control, and you can see here which tab is active. Here, third tab is active. Third tab is active. What is that? Fields means we have to make one of the tab to be what active tab. Okay, in this case, which tab is active? Fields tab, and that active tab, and that active tab should be associated with what a sub screen. That active tab should be associated with a sub screen. Okay, so this is a sub screen. Done. Okay. So now, what is the requirement? Is something like this here. I want a screen which should contain a tab strip control, and the tab strip control should contain two tab buttons. And each tab should be associated with a sub screen. So on the normal screen, on the normal screen, we are having the tab strip control. Okay. And that tab strip control will have what two tab buttons. And each tab button will be associated with what? A sub screen. Each tab button will be associated with a sub screen. And this sub screen cannot be placed directly on normal screen. A sub screen cannot sit directly on normal screen. A sub screen is always placed on top of what sub screen area. I repeat once again a sub screen cannot sit directly on what normal screen. Sub screen is always placed on top of what sub screen area. So a sub screen area is a container of what sub screens. I repeat sub screen area. Is a container of what sub screens? Okay, so for both the tabs, I can take the same sub screen area. The same sub screen area can hold what both the sub screens. So overall, we require three screens here: one normal screen and two sub screens. And since we have two sub screens, I can take two different sub screen areas, or I can use the same sub screen area. So this is the overall requirement and Another validation is uh, uh, by default the second tab should be active. Means whenever the screen is displayed, the second tab should be what active. That is the requirement. Okay. So let's see how to design this particular screen. So when do we go for tab strip control? Okay. We, instead of placing all the fields in one screen, we need to separate the logically related fields. Suppose tab one you assume tab one has to show me the employee fields, tab two should show me the department fields, tab three should show me the address fields. Okay, something like that. So logical separation of what fields. Instead of placing all the fields in a single screen, instead of having a scroll bar to scroll horizontally or vertically, I can place all the fields in one screen, but in the form of sub screens. Okay. Something like this. Okay, so let's see how to design this. 
So first focus is we need to design what? A normal screen. So let me go to where do we design the module full screens? Object navigator. Object navigator. Okay. So let me go to that. I'll go to SC80. Done. Okay. So here I'll choose program. I'll give the program name. Let me give the program name as Z test MPP5. I'll press enter. Program does not exist. Create the object. Yes. I'll choose what top include program. I'll create the program with the top include. Done. I'll give the name of the top include program as Z test MPP5 top. Z test MPP5 top. Continue. Done. Type of program is what module full. Let me save it. I'll save it in a local object. Done. So as of now, designing only the top include program. First, I need to create the screen. How do you create? Right click on the program and I'll say create what? Screen. Right click on the program, create screen. I'll give the screen number as something 100. Any number you can give, I'll give the screen number as 100. Let me provide the description here. I'll give the description as something screen 100. Done. What is the screen type here? Normal. Screen type is what? Normal. So let it be normal. I'll go to the layout. First, I'm designing the normal screen. So on the normal screen, what I have to take? I need to take the tab strip control. So this is my screen layout, right? So let me place the tab strip control. So you can see on the toolbox, we have a tab strip control, left hand side. Okay, so I'll just click on this, I'll draw it here. So this is my tab strip control. Okay, this is my tab strip control. This is my tab strip control. For every control, for every element placed on the screen, we have to give a name now. So let me give a name for this particular tab strip control. So I'll just double click on this. Yeah, name I'll give it as something. Uh, any name you can give, I'll give the name as something TBSTR. TV, STR, any name you can do. I'll press enter. After giving the name, yeah, you can see. Uh, yeah, you can see here tab title. How many tabs you are getting? A two tabs. Suppose I'll say here tab, there's a property called as tab title. I'll give this as something 20. Okay, so I'll get what 20 tab buttons. So, so tab title is a property which controls the number of what tab buttons. I want only two tabs. So I'll give only two done. Okay, so name of the tab strip control is TVSTR and tab title I gave it as two done. Let me save it. Okay, these are not push buttons. Push button means which will sit on top of what screen. These are tab buttons which will sit on top of what tab strip control. Push button only, but they are called as tab buttons. Okay, so I need to set properties for the tab buttons also. Generally. Generally, for the push buttons, what are the properties? We'll set name, text, and function code. Okay, for push buttons, we'll set the properties what name, text, and function code. So let me double click on this. Right. Okay, I'm trying to set the properties for the first tab button. Okay, name it is asking. So sorry, cancel. So name, I'll give a name as some meaningful name I'll give. I'll give it as something T1. Done. Text, I'll give it as what tab one is there by default. So I'll just give the text as something what tab button one. Something, some text, whatever you want to give it. Okay. So I get as tab button one. Okay. Done. Then for the tab button also, we have to use the function code now. So there is a property called as FCT code, function code. I'll give the function code as FC1. 
you can give anything and give it as fc1 so even after giving these three properties name text and function code the color is not changed if it is a normal push button these three properties are sufficient but for tab button apart from giving the name text and function code tab button will contain what subscreen every tab is also with subscreen but subscreen cannot sit directly on normal screen subscreen should be placed on top of what subscreen area so you can see here for the tab button there is a property called as there is a pink color property here okay what is the reference field reference field will hold the name of the subscreen area reference field will hold the name of the subscreen area so what i have to give here i have to give the name for the subscreen area the moment i give the name here the moment i give a name here automatically a subscreen area will be placed in this suppose here i'll say name i'll give it as s area 1 s area 1 subscreen area 1 i'll press enter done acha it is not placing i thought it will place okay it is not placing done so what is the name of the subscreen area here s area 1 it is not placing so i'll do one thing i'll do one thing since it is not placing i'll just remove this i'll keep it blank as of now i'll keep blank as of now so what i'll do inside my tab button actually it should place and i'm sure about that okay in this is my php7 with ana database okay it's not placing but you try in your ecc 6.0 definitely the moment you give the name compulsory it has to place the subscreen area control automatically in the tab button okay so here it is not placing so let me just remove this not remove right what is the name i gave s area 1 na? so what i'll do inside my tab button okay i'll select the tab button one yeah you can see on the toolbox we have one control called as what subscreen area we have a control called as subscreen area i'll just draw it in my tab button one i'll draw it inside my tab button one so this is my subscreen area okay if i double click on this what is the name it is taking automatically s area 1 Thus, I gave the reference field as what? I gave the reference field as what? If you see the properties of tab button one, reference field I gave it as S area one. Nothing but subscreen area name. So what is the subscreen area I placed here? S area one. Okay, done. Then let me go to tab two. For tab two, let me give the name as T two. I'll give the name as T two. Text I'll give it as something tab two. No problem. function code i'll give it as fc2 fc2 then here also we have to place what reference field i have to give the name for the subscreen area if we can have same subscreen area or you can take a different subscreen area so i'll i will give the same thing i'll give s area 1 s area 1 so since s area 1 is already placed in tab 1 i believe it will place it in tab 2 let me check s area 1 yeah it is automatically taking here see for the tab 2 automatically the subscreen area is what is the subscreen area s area 1 so what is the understanding for both the tab buttons i am associating the same subscreen area okay this also is s area 1 and this also is having the same subscreen area s area 1 done then i should take one exit button now because you not as a back button I'll just take the exit button here. I'll give the name as something B1. Text I'll give it as something exit. Function code let me give it as something FC3. Okay, FC3. So since it is a normal push button, I don't have reference field property here. It is disabled. Only for the tab button, the reference field property will be available. So let me save it. Check for the syntax error. Activate this. Done. Okay. So what we have done is we have created a normal screen. On that normal screen, I have placed a tab strip control. I gave the name of the tab strip control as TBSTR, and the number of tab buttons are what two, which is controlled by a property called as tab title. Then for each tab button, we have to associate the properties. What are the properties that associate name, text, 
function code and reference field reference field will hold the name of what subscreen area okay so i selected tab one under the tab one i have designed i have placed a subscreen area and now renamed it as what s area one s area one and for tab two also i'm using the same subscreen area so let me save it check for the syntax activate first let me write the logic for exit button so whenever we click on the button the event trigger is pa as of now my program is having only one screen so let me go to the screen flow logic i handle which event pai process after input let me double click on that does not exist i'll just stop into program continue you want to save it yes done so here i'll say case sayucom when fc3 i think when fc3 i will say what leave program leave program then i'll say what end case let me save it check for the syntax activate this one then it's activated go back activate your flow logic done you have to create the t code for your program so right click on the program create what transaction i click on the program create transaction i'll give the t code name as something ztm5 some t code provide the description provide the program name i'll give the program name what ztest mpp5 screen number let me browse this screen number is 100 and i'll select the checkbox sap j for windows let me save it done i'll right click on the program and i'll activate Right. so it is successfully activated let me try to execute so i'll just summarize i have created a normal screen which contains a tab shift control the name of the tab shift control i gave it as a tv str let me try to execute this right click on the program execute direct processing yeah good i got a runtime error control variable not found control variable not found already uh, we got the similar kind of error when we are discussing the table control last two three days back when we discussed table control we understood that whenever a screen contains table control component we should declare the table control component explicitly by using control keyword the data type for table control is what table view so we have set controls so table control name type table view using screen so i'm just similarly if your screen contains tab strip control if your screen contains tab strip control the tab strip control also should be declared explicitly otherwise it gives what runtime error what is error i got control variable not found search performed for the control tbstr but this could not be found so i need to create what i need to create what i need to declare what tab strip control So where do we declare the variables in the top include program? So I'll go to top include program. Right, this is my program. I'll just navigate to the top include program. Open it in editable mode. I'll declare the tab strip control. So how do we declare the tab strip control bits? We have to use the keyword controls. What is the name I gave for tab strip control? TBSTR type what? Table type what? Tab strip type tab strip. This is a syntax for declaring the tab strip control. What is the keyword you have to use? Controls. What is the data type for tab strip control? Tab strip. So let me save it. Check for the syntax. Activate this. Then go back. Right click on the program and activate. Then it's activated. Let me execute this. Right click on the program. I'll say execute what? Direct processing. Done. Good. I got what? the screen which is having the tab strip control by default which tab is active second tab, first tab is active but my validation is what second tab should be active by default second tab should be active by default okay so before that okay before that which tab is active by default first tab na that first tab should be associated with the subscreen na? so i need to design a subscreen how many subscreens two subscreens Each subscreen you have to associate with a 
tab button. So first let me design the subscripts. So how to design the subscripts? Right click on the program, create. Create what? Screen. I'll give the screen number as something 200. I'll use 100, so I'll use 200. I'll give some description here. I'll give it a subscreen 200. Screen type should be what now? Subscreen. In the attributes tab only. Screen type should be what? Subscreen. So choose a screen type as subscreen. Then go to layout. Design the layout for your subscreen. What is the content you want to show in that? I just want to show the context. Like this is tab one content, this is tab two content. So since this is a subscreen, since this is a subscreen, I'll just reduce the size. Unless I'll get the scroll bar, I'll just reduce the size. Right, so I'll place one text here. I'll take the text field, I'll just draw it here. Right. I'll double click on this. I'll give the name as something uh, TF1, text field 1, or I can do T1 also. Okay. T1, I'll give the name as what? This is tab content 1. This is tab content 1. That's all. Okay. Done. Let me save it. Check for the syntax. Here I can design whatever you want. If you want to place the database fields, yes, choose the window, go to secondary window. Already we know this. We can design any, anything here. I can take a table control also. Save it, check it, activate this. Yeah, subscreen 200 is created. Let me create another subscreen. Right click on the program, create what? Uh, screen. I'll give the screen number as something 300. Let me provide the description as something subscreen 300. I'll choose a screen type as what? Subscreen. I'll go to what? Layout. Done. Let me reduce the size of the width and height of the subscreen. Done. So I'll take the text field here. I'll give the name as something T1 here also, no problem. This is also some text, text property. I mean, this is tab content two. Okay, so let me save it. Check for the syntax error. Activate this. Then it is activated. Go back. So we have what two? So overall, we have what three screens. One is normal screen, and another two are what uh, subscreens. Okay. Now, which tab is active by default? which tab is active by default first tab but i want to activate which tab i want to activate the second tab for the second tab what is the subscreen i have to attach 300 we have two subscreens 200 and 300 200 i will assign it to tab one and 300 i'll assign it to tab two since i want the default tab as second tab so i'll attach what 300 so what i'll do first of all is in my top include program i'll declare one variable I'll declare one variable which has to hold the screen number. So I'll say data, some variable name I'll give v underscore screen number, type what? SYDYNR. SYDYNR is a system field. SY from DYNR is a system field which holds a screen number. So what is the default value I'll give? Value for this I'll give it as 300. So in this variable, I'm assigning the value as what? 300. I'm assigning the value of 300. Okay, done. V underscore screen number type SY if and DNR value is what 300. Let me save it. Check for the syntax error. Done. Okay, so uh, our T code is linked with what screen? T code is linked with the normal screen 100. Na? So whenever a screen is called or whenever a module pool screen is called, what is the first event triggered? PBO. The first event triggered is what? PBO. So what I'll do, I'll just double click on the screen 100. Because, understood, because we have linked the T code with the main screen only. So in this main screen, what is the first event triggered? PBO. So in the PBO event, I need, this is the first event triggered now. So we just now seen first tab is active. But we have to attach the subscreen. Now how do we attach now? This is a statement you have to say. Call subscreen. 
called subscreen. What is the subscreen area name? S area one called subscreen, subscreen area name, including in which program the subscreen is designed in the same program. No? So how do you refer to the same program? Sci FID. Sci FID. What subscreen you want to attach by default? What subscreen you want to attach by default? Uh, second subscreen. Actually, first tab is active. Achha, I'll do one thing. Initially, let me make this as 200 only. I'll make this as 200 only. Okay, the value of this screen number is 200. Done. Now, here what I'll do is, here I'll say, what is the variable name? V underscore screen number. What is the value of this V underscore screen number? 200. Why I'm giving 200 as the default value? Because the default first tab is active now. So how do we associate the subscreen with the tab means? This is the syntax. This syntax I cannot write wherever I want. It can be written, it can be recognized only in the flow logic. So what is the statement? Call subscreen, subscreen area, call subscreen, subscreen area, including subscreen program name, followed by subscreen number. Subscreen program name means the program name where the subscreen is designed. It is designed in the same program. Now. How do you refer to the current program by using the system field psi rep ID? And what is the value of default value of this variable? 200. So let me save it. Check for the syntax error. Activate this. Done. It is activated. So whenever we start the execution, our T code is linked with the undead screen. Now. Whenever the screen 100 is called, whenever the model pool screen 100 is called, what is the first event triggered? PVO. So it will try to call that subscreen, and that subscreen will be placed in the active tab. Which tab is active by default? First tab. So when I right click, activated. Let me execute now. Right click on the program, execute. What is this? Direct processing. Good. What is happening? The first tab is active by default, and I got what the subscreen to one. But my requirement is what second tab should be active by default. So what I'll do is what I'll do is what is the first event triggered? PBO no? done. So and we know that PBO event is triggered multiple times. It is triggered for the first time as well as it is triggered every time after PA. So this logic, whatever I'm going to write now, should be executed only for the first time. So what I'll do, I'll take one uh, flag variable kind of thing. So here I'll say, I'll say data, something V underscore flag, type what, I, what is the default value, zero. And which subscreen you want to attach by default? Second subscreen. So here I'll say, the sub second subscreen number is 300 done so i declared a variable v underscore flag type i what is the default value of this flag variable zero now so what i'll do is here before this call subscreen statement before this call subscreen statement i'll create my own module module something abc some module module name double click on this module definition just double click on the module definition PBO model does not exist. Do you want to create the object? Yes. Right. I'll choose what? Top include program. Continue. I'll choose a top include program. Continue. Done. Now here I'll say. Here I'll say. Yeah. This module logic should be executed only once. So I'll say if V underscore flag is equal to what? Zero. The V underscore fly equal to zero. First time it is zero now. So the moment it enters this block, the moment it enters this block, I'll set flag value as what one. V underscore flag equal to what one. Done. Now what I'll do if flag is equal to zero, I'm setting flag as what one. Now here, what is the name of the tab strip control? TBSTR now. So I'll say TBSTR iPhone. What? Active tab equal to TBSTR iPhone active tab equal to active tab is a property of what tab strip control. So TBSTR iPhone active tab equal to which tab you want to activate by default? Second tab. What is the function code of the second tab? FC2. FC2. Okay. And I'll say what? End it. Done. 
okay i'll say end if okay now let me save it any of the screen number by default is what 200 sorry 300 i gave what 300 here here i gave it as what 300 understood save it check it activate this activate this include go back activate your flow logic done so i'll repeat once again our t code is linked with what normal screen 100 whenever we start the execution screen 100 will be invoked whenever the screen 100 in, is invoked it will execute which event first pvo in case of selection screen first event triggered is what initialization here it is a pvo so this pvo model gets executed I'm checking the condition. Is flag equal to zero? Yes, first time flag is equal to zero. It will enter the block, it will change the flag value to one. And here I'm activating which tab? Second time I'm activating. What is the default value for the variable V underscore screen number I gave here? I gave what? 300 now. In the stop include program, I gave it as 300. So after this model is executed, we will try to call the subscreen. Okay? So what is the subscreen? It will try to call 300. This 300 will be associated with active tab. Which tab you made it as active? Second tab. Okay, so I'll activate this program. Execute this. I right click on the program. Execute direct processing. Done. Second tab is active. And this uh, second subscreen is what? Associated. Now in the runtime, if the user clicks on this, I need to activate this tab. And I need to associate the first subscreen now. So whenever we click on the tab buttons, what is the event triggered? Same event, PAI, PAI. So tab buttons are there on the tab strip control. Tab strip control is there on the main screen. Na? So what is the main screen number 100? So what is the event triggered PAI now? So in the PAI event here, I'll say, what is the function code of the first tab? FC1, when FC1, first of all, I have to activate that. How do we activate the tab? tbstr hyphen active tab is equal to equal to what fc1 and what is the subscreen i have to assign now 200 now so i'll set this variable to what 200 v underscore screen number equal to what 200 done again if the user clicks on second tab also when fc2 when fc2 i have to activate the tab so tbstr hyphen active tab is equal to what fc2 equal to fc2 then i'll say v underscore what screen number is equal to i'll give what something 300 done tv strf and active tab equal to fc2 v underscore screen number is equal to what 300 done so after executing this pa it will execute pvo now so again it go to pvo again this model will be executed but this time this logic will not be executed because the memory flag is set to what? One. So directly it will call the subscreen by associating that particular screen number. Activate this. Hope it's clear. Whenever I click on the tab buttons, if I click on the first tab, I'm activating the tab. How do we activate the tab? By using a property called as active tab. And what is the screen number variable I'm changing? 200. So after executing this logic, again the control comes to PBO. In the PBO, it will refer to this variable. What is the current value of this variable? 200. It will show that 200 with the active tab. Let me right click the program, activate, execute this. Right click on the program, I will say execute direct process. Done. By default, the second tab is active. If I click on the first tab, first tab is active. If I click on the second tab, second tab is working fine. So, this is the way to construct your tab strip control. Okay, the important property for tab strip control is active tab. Okay, and how do we call the subscreens in module 2 programming? What is the syntax? Call subscreen, subscreen area, including subscreen program name, followed by what? Subscreen number. Call subscreen, subscreen area, including subscreen program name, followed by subscreen uh, what? number. Okay. That's it. This is about the tab strip control. Any questions, please ask me. So if you debug also, let me try to debug. I'll put the breakpoint here. I'll put the breakpoint in PBO module. I'll put the breakpoint in PAI module also. 
done. When I try to execute, what is the first event triggered? PBO, no? PBO event is triggered. So, let's see where it stops. It is stopping in the PBO event only. You can see PBO event. What is the module? ABC. What is the current value of flag? Current value of flag in the memory is zero. So if condition is satisfied, first time if condition is satisfied, it will enter the if block. I'm changing the flag value to one so that next time this if condition will not be satisfied. What I'm doing in this block, in this PBO model, I'm activating the second tab because my requirement is second tab should be active by default. After executing this module, what is the next statement there? Call subscreen. So when I say F5, done. Okay, it will see here. It is executing call subscreen now. Call subscreen, subscreen including so on so side ID. Which tab we have activated? Second tab. What is the variable value now? V underscore screen number. If you see V underscore screen number, what is the current value? 300. Default value is 300. So when I say F8, then I got it. Okay, second uh, subscreen is what? Shown. I'll click on tab button one. What is the event trigger? PA. Yes, it is stopping in PA. Okay, now. What I'm doing here, what is the value of the first tab button I give FC1? So when FC1, F5, what you are doing inside this, we are activating the tab. We are activating the tab, then it is activated. Then I'm changing the screen number to what? 200. Done. Yeah, screen number where is still 200. After executing PAE logic, it will try to execute PBO now. So when I say F5, F5, yes, it is going to our PBO module. It is going to PBO module. This module will be executed again. But this time, what is the value of flag in the memory? One now. So this if condition is failed. It will not enter the if block. It is coming out of the if block. Done. F5. We are calling the subscreen. What is the current value of the subscreen number? 200. Which tab is active? Second tab is active. So I got what? Sorry. First tab is active. I got the first tab. Similarly for what? Second tab also. Hope it's clear. Exit F8. I got it. So, any questions related to tab strip control, please ask. And do, how do you call a subscreen? Call subscreen. This statement I cannot write wherever I want. This statement is recognized only in the flow logic section, it is not recognized anywhere else. That's all. This is about the tab strip control. So in your module pool, what are the controls uh, we have seen so far? If you go to the layouts, we have seen what? Text field. We have seen what? I.O. field. Uh, we have seen what? Push button. We have just now seen what? Tab strip control. This is tab strip control with the wizard. With the wizard. Okay. And this is table control. This is table control with the wizard. And this is custom control, and we also discuss what subscreen AD. Okay, and how many screen types you have seen? Two screen types so far: normal screen and what subscreen. Okay. In the next session, we'll discuss about what model dialog box. This is another screen type, model dialog box. Done. So any questions, please ask. Uh, similarly, like uh, in the build law that uh, we have dynamic creation of UI elements. So uh, like that, do we have here also any UI no. creation? No, no. There we have a dynamic programming concept. There no, uh, those elements exist in the form of what? Classes and interfaces, OK? So we can instantiate them and we can create the elements dynamically. We can create the view layout dynamically. Here, no. Compulsory, we should be designed statically, not possible. Oh, and only these are the UI elements we have? Yeah, only whatever we are able to see on the toolbox. Oh. Okay. Yeah. But what we can do is, we can once a screen layout is designed we can control the appearance of the screen by looping that screen internal table we can enable disable we can make it visible invisible all those things we can do oh. 
Any questions? If everyone agrees, I'll take the class tomorrow. If it is fine with everyone, I can take around one and a half hour tomorrow. From 6.30 onwards, I can take. If everyone agrees, if everyone is okay for that. 6.32, 8 o'clock, I can take the session tomorrow. Sayed, is it fine with you? Sayed, are you there? No problem. No? Hmm. Others, I hope it's fine now. Okay, so tomorrow what will this? I don't have any other class before this, so we'll have this Koraba class tomorrow from 6.30, 6.30 to 8. 6.30 to 8 we'll have it tomorrow. Nilima, Manika, Latika, is it fine with everyone? Chinna, Srikant, Ramshi. Okay. So tomorrow we'll have this session from 6.30 and 6.30 to 8. Tomorrow what we'll do is, uh, we will see that uh, another screen type. What is that? Model dialog box. Model dialog box. And we have other concepts of this model. We will discuss that tomorrow. Okay. So we will have this session tomorrow at 6.30. Done. So I will wind up for today. And uh, uh, those who are hitting UI5, Srikanth, Rajesh and others. Uh, UI5 I am not taking today. I will take it directly on Monday. We don't have UI5 today, Srikant. Okay. I'll directly take it on Monday. UI5 session. Okay. Korabab session. Tomorrow I'm taking at what? Uh, 6.30. Sharadan. So I'll wind off. We'll meet tomorrow at 6.30. I don't have any class before this. So I'll try to start sharp by 6.30. Okay. Shadow. I'm winding off. We'll continue tomorrow at 6.30. We will try to finish off module 2 programming tomorrow. We are done with almost everything. We will try to finish off the module 2 tomorrow. Shall I then? So I will wind up. We will meet tomorrow at 6.30.